We begin tonight with Boeing. See a Dennis Mullenberg getting grilled by lawmakers on Capitol Hill today over the 737 MAX crashes. Let's get straight to Phil Bow in D.C. with all the highlights. Hey, Phil. Melissa, the senators blasted Dennis Mullenberg time and again on a wide variety of issues. Some accused Boeing and the CEO of not being straight with them, outright lying to them in terms of certain questions about the 737 MAX. Others basically said to him, you're the CEO. How could you let this happen? You're the CEO. The buck stops with you. Did you read this document? And how did your team not put it in front of you, run in, with their hair on fire, saying, we got a real problem here. Those pilots never had a chance. These loved ones never had a chance. They were in flying coffins. I would walk before I was to get on a 737 MAX. I would walk. There's no way. Just a few of the comments from senators uh, asking Dennis Mullenberg and also offering their opinions in terms of the 737 MAX. For Dennis Mullenberg's part, he said, time, he said time and again, look, safety is at the core of our mission. We are committed to making sure that the MAX is safe when it returns to flight and that the company makes changes that are necessary to ensure that this never happens again. And guys, as you take a look at shares of Boeing, yeah, this stock came back a little bit today. And people are saying, well, does that mean that Dennis Mullenberg did a good job on the Hill? No, it simply means that investors are looking at this saying, how much worse can it get? What's the worst that can happen for Boeing? Yeah, maybe this plane doesn't return to service by the end of the fourth quarter, but it will at some point, and there is a backlog of planes. And I know you guys have talked about this at length. I think that's what the investors were looking at today, saying, get past the headlines, get past a bad day for Dennis Mullenberg on the Hill and focus on that backlog of 4,400 737 maxes. That all implies, Phil, that Congress will put the blame squarely on Dennis Mullenberg and Boeing and not necessarily on the FAA, which might cause the 737 max to be grounded for even longer and or change certification right. processes. Melissa, I think you're spot on with that. I think that the pressure is on the FAA and that when they finally decide, okay, we've got all the material that we need from Boeing for the recertification of the MAX, how long does it take for them to do this? Because they were embarrassed by what happened a year ago when the rest of the world grounded this plane while they repeatedly said, the data is not there, the data is not there. And now, everything that's come out in the last year, I mean, it's clear that the FAA is going to have to, to show Capitol Hill Yes, we understand our role as a regulator is not just to rubber stamp this plane. And I mean, this also assumes that, well, regulators around the world, I'm assuming, watched this testimony as well. Oh, yeah. They can be even tougher than the FAA sure. in terms of getting that MAX recertified. Sure. And, and we'll see that with Europe. Now, they're not real yeah. far behind the FAA. They basically said, look, we're within weeks when the FAA signs off on it. We're probably just a little bit behind them. But China's the one to watch. And for all the reasons that we've talked about, Melissa, that this goes beyond just the certification process in China, there could be a political element of this involved mm -hmm. as well. All right, Phil, thank you. Phil LeBeau. You bet. Uh, with today's testimony, tomorrow, of course, uh, Mullenberg returns to the Hill uh, for the House. In the meantime, what Phil said was very interesting. Investors are assuming that the worst may be behind Boeing. Do you agree? Uh, for today, they did. And, and listen, I thought the stock would trade and test 321. I think that was the August low on October 21st. I think it traded 324 thereabouts on 15 million shares, which is about four times normal volume. So for the short term, at least, you have what we say is a pretty decent tradable bottom. But I'm hard pressed to believe, given everything we've heard, that the headline risk still doesn't exist. And the FAA, they, for them to certify this plane going forward, they're going to have to go through things in the most rigorous way in the history of the agency. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, again, I'm hard pressed to believe that we're on the other side of the bad news flow. So my take is rally should be sold. I think we go lower from here. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I mean, unfortunately, uh, you know, the unknowns are just not quantifiable right here. And I think that uh, one of the senators made this point. He said, I would walk before I would get on. The That's going to be an issue that a lot of carriers are going to have to deal with just from a PR standpoint when they finally agree to take those planes. Will 
customers want to fly on them. We just don't know. And this is a, you know, a long time coming. And I just look at the estimates. You know, sales last year were $101 billion. They're expected to be $83 billion. And then I think consensus has them going up to $123. That's assuming that all these planes that are being built are going to be sold again. Boeing may end up holding oh, billions and billions and billions of dollars of these planes before the carriers buy them again. And that's the point about China, I guess. All right. Yeah, and the stock's traded this way all year. For the better part of 10 months, we've been in this range between 320 and 380 let's call it. And effectively, what the investors have been doing is getting optimistic. Remember, oh, it was supposed to be first or second quarter of this year was going to come out. Then it was going to be September, and it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. So we're in this optimistic phase, but I think I'm with everybody else here. You know, you get up to 360, 380, somewhere in that range. I'd be selling it because I do think it's going to be a long time. We don't know what kind of liability is there. We don't know how customers are going to respond to this. And then what are you, what are you buying here? Right? What are you trying to trade? What's the theme? You're trying to trade the airline industry, but you're also trying to trade defense. You have better ways to do that. You could buy UTX. You could buy Delta Airlines if you want to try to play those things and have none of the headline risk that Boeing has. But you might be also be try trying to trade a duopoly. And that's right. a dynamic that exists here that's different from any other crisis that you can point to and try and make a comparison to. I was trying to make the comparison to Wells Fargo, oh. but it's completely different in that they've only got, you've only got Airbus and you've only got Boeing. Which is the interesting part, and Dan brings up the unknowns, you bring up all the liabilities, and I don't disagree with that. And that's why I've had a really hard time. I've looked at this so many different times, Mel, where I've said, you know what, I think I'm going to buy it if it gets to this level. And I haven't done it. And why haven't I done it? Even with the duopoly, yeah. there's still an issue out there of we don't know what the actual impacts will be. I mean, I think the one thing that we can look towards in the future will be, I think they will eventually get that free, free cash flow back. I think there's a lot of things they'll get back. We know about the backlog. Their, their competitor has an unbelievable backlog. So where are people going to go if they jump out of Boeing? Are they really going to go to the competitor? Because if so, they're in a multi-year line, right? right? I mean, so there's that. that's what makes this so interesting. And I think that's why the stock hasn't cracked. Otherwise, I think it should have been a 285 stock like it was a year ago, December. Never got down to those levels again. Key word is crack. I mean, I'm just, I've just pulled up the BP chart from 10 years ago, and I'm not yeah. saying that this is equivalent to what happened sure. in the Gulf in there. But that stock went from $60 to below 30 in a matter of you know, months or something like that. And then at some point, you can say, listen, they, all these unknowns, the same thing, the sentiment's horrible. If I'm buying this for 10 years out, will I be okay? And you say probably, yeah, and it's worked out okay at some point. Mm -hmm. This one with Boeing, we just don't, it hasn't cracked, to your point. It just, it hasn't The resilience is right. the fact yeah. that I think yeah. stands out. And, and, I mean, it's been no, so right. resilient at these levels. I think saying that this is but. the deal of the century because of the duopoly or whatever you're saying. There's a lot of stocks out there to trade. Yeah. And so when there's this much confusion on trying to figure this one out, Why try? Right, it, it makes sense to Here's maybe look around. There's one question I asked yesterday, but you weren't here yesterday. No, I was gallivanting. You're gallivanting <laughs> around. I don't know it's what a now. Um, here's a question. If Dennis Mullenberg steps, steps down, down, gets kicked out, whatever, does the stock go no, up or I don't down? Think, what, in what do you my think? opinion, I don't think that has any effect at all. Really? I mean, maybe knee jerk it goes higher. But I mean, if you're looking for a fall person on the back of this to rally the stock, I think you're looking at the wrong places. And I understand what everybody says in terms of the stock hasn't broken down in a meaningful way. But consider this. I mean, you've talked about the duopoly. I'll put, stock has been bolstered by the fact that the S&P 500 is at an all-time high. So you've had tremendous market tailwinds behind this, and it's still down from 450-ish back in February of last year, right? So, I mean, it's not like it hasn't, it has been punished. I, I think our point is we're surprised it hasn't been punished enough. But if the broader market were to ever to roll over for whatever reason, I don't think Boeing would be, um, I don't think they'd be Rubious. safe from that move.